We're in a new sermon series. It's been going on now for just a couple of weeks, but every week will be a new week, basically, because every week we're focusing on uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. And we're looking at the Bible. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, and we're looking at different characters inside Hebrews chapter 11, and we're looking at how they and their faith make an impact into our lives, and we're able to build on what they have brought before us. That's true for us as individuals. Today we come, we celebrate Mother's Day, and we know that in our lives, moms are important. How in some of our lives, there are different relationships, different things that go on. But we know that what we learn from our parents really does make impact into our life, both positive and negative. And yet in God's word, we find to be faithful to his promise, faithful to who he is, is what we want to learn, what we want to live our lives out of as followers of Christ. Today, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. We're looking at verse 11. And in that one verse, we find this one person that's really a hero of faith to us. And this person is the person of Sarah. Sarah becomes a woman of faith, mentioned here in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. It's very impactful to all of our lives. Very impactful to help us recognize the promises of God and how she found those promises of God faithful in her own life. We'll walk through these things in just a moment in the listening guide. There there are four things that we'll talk about today that will allow us to see some things about our life and how we might relate those to who Sarah is and what the Bible might teach us about our own faithfulness. In this story, we find a backstory, as there usually is in all of our lives. There's a backstory to who we are, right? So we find this verse in chapter 11 of Hebrews chapter 11. And if you have a Bible, you can turn to that verse. It's, uh, it's going to be on the screen. It's in your listening guide. But if you have a Bible, you can turn there. If you don't have a Bible, there's one in the pew in front of you. If you don't have a Bible at home, you're welcome to take that as our gift to you. So you'll have a copy of God's word in your home and in your life, in your car, wherever you need it, because we believe reading God's word allows us to even go deeper in understanding his great promises to us. In this verse 11, it's a pretty simple statement. It says, And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. A very simple, straightforward kind of verse. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Now, the backstory of this is found in the first book of the Bible called Genesis. In Genesis chapter 17 and 18 is really where we find this particular backstory. Genesis chapter 12 starts the story of Abraham and Abraham obeying God and going off to a new land with his wife Sarah and how God has going to promise them a covenant, had made a covenant with them and promised them that he was going to make them uh, the parents of a great nation. Now, there had been some time that had passed between that 12th chapter of Genesis and the 17th and 18th chapter of Genesis, probably around 20 years or so. Uh, It had happened 15 years that time had been inside that. And so at some point in that whole scenario backstory, Sarah believed that she was going to have a son. Why? Because they were going to be parents of a great nation. So it would simply indicate that, of course, she's going to be the mother of a great nation. But they got to a place, as we found in those chapters, that Sarah could not have children, was, had not had a child. And so she really decides to kind of take matters into her own hands. And she gives to uh, Abraham, her husband, uh, her, her slave or her house servant who was named uh, Hagar. And she says, maybe God is doing this, that this, this off seed would come through Hagar. Well, you might know a little of that story. Uh, that happened. She uh, gave birth to a son, Ishmael, and there became a conflict inside that. And the backstory gets even deeper in all the things that have even occurred to this day through really Sarah not waiting upon the plan of God. And that's one of the things we talk about today. What happens in our life when we see God's plan, but in our impatient world, in our impatient lives, don't simply wait for God's plan to occur the way he has already designed it and purposed it. 
Well, in this verse, though, it says over in Hebrews chapter 11 that now Sarah, and we build on the shoulders of this giant, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. That, that backstory again goes back to uh, Genesis chapter 17. And in Genesis chapter 17, Abraham, who is out there at his house, entertains some guests. <clears throat> and those guests tell him that Sarah is going to have a son. Now, the Bible says that Sarah is now 90 years old, and her ability to have a child naturally would be gone. It would not be possible. But yet, they tell Abraham, and in chapter 17, it says that Abraham laughed at that. He, he thought that was whatever. He just, just couldn't imagine what that was going, that was going to happen. Now, in chapter 18 of Genesis, it tells us that Sarah had also overheard or also heard them saying that she was going to have this child a year from now. These men say that within a year, we'll come back and she will have a child. And Sarah laughs at that possibility. Some have talked about the different laughter and why one was laughing in one way and what they were meaning in that laughter. Now, actually, the word Isaac, who becomes their son in his history, uh, Isaac's name means laughter. He laughs. So there is a, a feeling inside that was God was at work, and you may have even heard that sometimes, that who's going to get the laugh, laugh, and the last laugh in something. I don't believe that's the concept of what God was doing. God was not trying to get the last laugh. He was trying to allow them to see the faithfulness of his promise. And that's what he does for us. There's sometimes in our lives where we struggle with all the things that are going along around us, all the backstories that we deal with, our hurts, our frustrations, all the things of life. But our purpose is to understand that God has a promise for us. What has he promised you? For example, he, we know that he has promised that we can have rest in him. We sang about that in the song, The Promise of Rest. He tells us when our burdens are heavy and we need to be able to bring our burdens to him, that he promises us that when we give them to him, we will have rest. That's a promise. Matter of fact, the Bible gives us well over 350 promises. Some say 365 promises, one for every day of our life, if we were to look at them and walk through them. Those promises that he's given to you, that he is about fulfilling. That's what we see in this verse. So let's take our listening guys and just for a few minutes be able to walk through what we might learn from Sarah about our own lives in this verse when it says to us, and by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. It starts off simply by saying, by faith in the first couple of verses of Hebrews chapter 11 is talking about this faith where the first verse says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen, the confidence that we have that comes from our faith. So obviously in the very beginning of this verse, it's helping us to understand that Sarah in her life, there was a foundation of faith. Now, there are some times when we struggle believing all the things of God, but the point of that is that in our lives, there must be a, a strong foundation of faith of who Christ is in us and how Christ is working in our lives. As followers of Christ, as people with a worldview that is Christ-centered, that is in Christ alone, then our basic foundation of our faith is centered in not in our ability or not in what the world tells us, but our basic focus, the foundation is the faith that is in Christ that is in our life. The word teaches us that we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And that faith is what makes our strength, what allows us to move through life as it did for Sarah. Even those things seemed very different, even though she was laughing at what she thought would be something that could not happen. There are four things I want us to look at quickly this morning. First of all, by faith, the heavenly father encourages, the heavenly father encourages a heart that feels inadequate. There are times in all of our lives where we feel inadequate. We are not adequate to do the task that is before us. It says in this verse that she was past childbearing age. 
You talk about someone who felt inadequate when she heard that. Why would she be adequate to be able to do what these men were saying that she was going to have a child? It would have been not something that she was able to do. The natural part of her body, the natural understanding of who she was at a 90-year-old woman would say, that is not going to happen. I am not adequate to do what God is saying that I am going to do. Now, how many times did we feel that in our consequences and circumstances of life? How many times do we feel that we are not adequate to do what God calls us to do, or we're not adequate to live up to how we want to live up or what happens in our life. Because inside our lives comes this huge doubt that just overwhelms us sometimes. And out of our inadequacy comes this doubt that we we can't do this. We are not capable. We don't have the tools. We don't have the ability. All those things, all those words that you would use would say that I'm a person who is just inadequate to be used by God. Yet, that's not what the Bible teaches us. Remember, this verse at the end of it says that she was past childbearing age, but she wasn't able to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. So, out of our doubt must come courage. And that's why this word, that whole idea that we, we're encouraged, our, our hearts are encouraged when we feel inadequate. And that's what we have to have. We have to come to the Father in such a way that our lives are encouraged by him, that he fills our heart with courage. The Bible teaches that over and over and over. As for all of us who feel inadequate about so many things, the only way we will be adequate about something is from the courage that is given to our lives through the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, who lives in us. C.S. Lewis says that courage is not simply one of the virtues, but the form of every virtue at the testing. So when we are tested, when we are dealing with these things of, God, I don't feel adequate to do this. Our response is, God, I need your courage to fill my heart. The second thing I'd say this morning is that by faith, the heavenly father enables a heart that is full of impossibilities. Now, there's a difference between inadequate, because an inadequate would say that I'm not capable of doing it. Impossibilities would say that something just isn't possible. And for a 90-year-old woman to have a child would be an impossibility. And yes, that is correct. It would be an impossibility in the world in which we live, in the nature in which we live in. But when God intersects the natural, it's a miracle. When God intersects the things of nature and changes that for his purpose, for his glory, it's about what he wants to do, not about Sarah. It's what he's going to do in the long run in the nations that God is doing here. It's not simply about what's good for Sarah and Abraham, not the fact that he had just promised them, but there was purpose in his promise that was going to glorify who he was. So the impossibility of her having a child at 90 changes when God gets in the mix, when God says, no, the purpose is not about you, the purpose is about me. So he uses that word enabled, which means that they are able to do that. They're able to make that happen. God is able, according to his word, to do anything he wants to do. He can do the possible. Now, there are times in our lives when we think about things, we walk through things, and we just think, that's an impossibility. That is not going to happen. There is no way under God's green earth that's going to work. Yet the Bible says that God, with God, all things are possible. Now, we're not talking about things that are things that are selfish, that things that we want, because remember, in this verse, it's not about Sarah being able to say, I want to have this child. Now it's about what God is doing in order to fulfill his promise. What promise has God made to you? What promise are you claiming from him? Do you need his rest? Do you need his courage? Do you need his strength? The Bible says that some trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Do you need his trust? What is it that you need today that's going to help you to say, I can overcome the impossibilities of my life. I can overcome these things that absolutely seem to keep me burdened down, and I can break those off. I can become free in Christ. Now, it may simply be salvation. It may be the fact that you have never come to Christ and been saved by him. Maybe you've never confessed him as your Lord and Savior. So it has to begin at that place because his greatest promise to you is that he has died on the cross, risen from the dead, that you can be saved. And so inside that, we have his promise of who he is. So Sarah 
who was past childbearing age, was enabled, she was able to bear a child. We know that she did, and so this impossibility becomes the possible through God. Third, by faith, the heavenly Father enriches, enriches a heart that is filled with fear. And I think that's one of the greatest things when you look back and you, and you kind of look at that chapter 17 and 18 and what Sarah was going through and all the things that were happening as she was at the tent door listening to these men who were saying well, a year from now she was going to have a child. What was going through her mind? I mean, the Bible says that she laughed at the possibility. But in her heart was, was this fear so great, was this fear so, well, so, so important to her because they had tried. They, they had tried through, through Hagar. They, they were waiting for God to fulfill his promises now, and it looked like all things were impossible. They get to this place where fear had just taken over. It was not going to happen, and, and that's what happens in our lives. Fear begins to take over. Fear of failure right? I, I failed in this. I, I haven't accomplished all that God wants me to do. I'm now at this age and this hasn't happened. Or I'm now, I finished this degree and this never happened. Or I had this great job, but it fell through. All those failures that we go through in life and all those failures lead us to greater fear. It leads us to the fate place that we're fearful of all the things around us. Now, one of the reasons, maybe the primary reason we have that feeling of fear is because we think it's really about us and about what we need to accomplish. Yet in this passage, it goes back time and time again to the faithfulness of God and the promise that he had brought about. It was about what he wanted to do through her life. What does God want to do in your life that fear stops? What does God want to do in your family that because of whatever circumstances, it doesn't happen because you Fear, failure, and it happening. Another part of fear, of course, is, is just expectations, right? The expectation that this is going to happen, then it doesn't. The expectation that Sarah was going to have a son and be the mother of all nations, and here she was 90 years old. The expectation of that going to occur, and it hasn't occurred yet. And Sometimes it's the patiently waiting upon the Lord that's the most difficult thing. That's the hard thing because we have this expectation that God is going to do something. And that expectation, most often, we think in terms of we not only expect it, but we have the timetable in which to make it occur. And if it doesn't work that way, if it doesn't happen in the time that we expect it to happen, then it becomes a problem for us. Yet in this passage, we click quickly understand that this fear, this fear that's born out of uh, fear, this fear that's born out of expectation, this fear that's born out of failure, everywhere that it comes from must come to back to the place of what God is doing. We must trust God's plan in order to experience his provision. Get that? We must trust his plan in order to experience God's provision. If we don't trust his plan, we'll never see his provision. And in our world today, there's a lot of things to be afraid of. There are a lot of things that happen. You, you look at the news last night or this morning, and you, you wonder, well, is, is Iran going to, going to shoot a missile at one of our Navy ships? Is something going to happen in China that's going to destroy everything there or in our relationship? What's going to happen with the economy and all the things that are going? So all of our lives are built around this, this fear factor that goes on, and almost often, it's because the provision that we're looking for is based in us. We need to be the ones who are providing. We need to be the ones who are doing. And, and that's where Sarah had been, right? She had, she had been trying to do that. Yet the word says, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful. So our fear has to be overcome by his faithfulness. It's the only place. It's the only place our, our fear becomes secondary is under his faithfulness. And then the last, by faith the heavenly father encounters, encounters a heart that is full of uncertainties. And I would just say to you that Abraham and Sarah, as they traveled around seeking to obey God, there's so many uncertainties in their lives. Yet this verse says that when they considered him faithful, who had made the promise? And I circled that word who, and I put a question mark there because my question was, 
who had made the promise. Abraham hadn't made the promise. He had just being willing to do what God has said. Sarah hadn't made the promise. She, she didn't really know what it meant to be a mother of all the nations. So who had made the promise? Who had made the promise? It had been God. God hadn't made the promise. And in the middle of our uncertainties, in the middle of all the things that go on around us, in the middle of our uncertain worlds, our uncertain families, in the middle of all uncertainties, we look back as followers of Christ. We look back to the certainty of who Christ is. And that's what we have. That is all that we have to be able to look at, which I think is more than enough. I think it's what we need in our life that's going to let us to see, to understand that the inadequacies that we have is not nearly as important or the impossibilities that we think about are not nearly as great as they are. The fears that sometimes overcome us don't have to overcome us in courage or the uncertainties that drive our life because the certainty is as a believer, as a follower of Christ, The certainty is Christ, what he has done to give us new life. Now, if you're not a follower of Christ, I would say to you that you won't have that certainty. It will be different because how you view things as a non-follower of Christ and how I view things as a follower of Christ are vastly different. Because I believe in a Savior who has done all things for us and has given us the promises not for our good, well, for our good, but for his glory. Not for our purpose, but for his purpose. And inside that, we get to be people who are able to have the good things of the Lord, his kindness, his love. So here's the question for today. We read this verse and we hear what it says, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. The uncertainties. See, our faith is grounded in God's word. Sarah didn't have God's word like we have God's word. We can pick up God's word. We can read God's word. But her faith was grounded in God's word because God's word was the promise. Our faith is grounded in God's word because his word is the promise. Her faith was grounded also in a relationship. A relationship that Abraham had with God a relationship where God had called them out and they were obedient. Our faith is grounded in a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, it's not about how many times we come to church or what we do or how much we give or all those things that come along with that, but it's grounded in this relationship with Christ. And it starts out in this verse, and by faith, even Sarah. I love that word, even Sarah, because you see, When I read that verse, I can stick my name in there and I can say, by faith, even Larry, all the things that I might feel inadequate about or impossible about or fear over or uncertainties about, even Larry can have the promise because he who is faithful is the one who made the promise. And you can have that too. You can have that same understanding by just saying, Even you and all your inadequacies, all your thoughts of impossibilities, all your thoughts of fear, all your thoughts of uncertainties are bound up in he who is faithful to you.